All right, McGuire, you want to see uh, how I stay in tune with the weather? <laughs> I keep track of the weather. For the first like time in six fancy, years, fancy, Scott Hexco uh, can walk the 20 weather steps weather to his backyard weather station and more expensive without one. getting but short of breath. Six weeks after receiving a new heart, Scott's a new man. It's been so, such a surreal thing that has happened. For a long time, it didn't seem like it was even me. I'm just happy to be here on this side of the planet, you know, and I can't wait to get back to the station and do what I love. Our weather ahead, not stormy, but rather docile tomorrow. The last time Scott was on the air was June 23rd. By then, the rare disease that attacked his heart could no longer be treated with a pacemaker. He knew he was in trouble. It was really tough to be on the air. I couldn't, I would park my car, and by the time I got up one flight of stairs, I'd be already gassed. Uh, so when I did the weather, I put in what I could, and then I'd sit down. So I'm going to be away for a while, and it could be for quite a while. Scott but, um, signed uh, off, went home, and the very next the day, time. checked in to Strong Memorial Hospital. He remained there for 95 days. Did you ever think, my husband is dying? Yes. Yeah, there were lots of times. 95 long days for his wife, Jen, and their three young children. So I had to put a brave face on for the kids. You're scared. You're scared because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, you're scared because how's your family going to be? Um, how's, how's your wife and kids going to be? Uh, financially, how are you going to be? It's every facet of your life that gets flipped. I took that hospitalization as my job. They told me, walk every day, eat well, we'll get you there. And they did. On September 15th, Scott's nurse practitioner gave him the news he'd waited for. She said, we have a great heart for you. And when she said that, I, you know, I feel like I'm gonna do it now. I lost it, you know. 11 hours later, Scott went into surgery. And two days after that, he heard the beat of his new heart for the first time. Grateful. I have to say grateful. I, and that's like the only word I could think of to describe all this. You know, every day I get up and I thank the donor. You know, however corny that may sound, I don't care because it's an extra day I've got. I love you and you made it. You're here. <laughs> These days, there's much to celebrate in the Hatsko household. They hold disco parties every night and 10-year-old Logan is back to riding his bicycle something he gave up when Scott was in the hospital. Like this. Yeah, and also a little hand sanitizer, please. Mm -hmm. But Scott's not out of the woods yet. Everybody. Visitors oh. have to wear masks. Uh, so, this... <sighs> Sorry. And though he's raring to go, Scott's on a strict regimen of pills. Yeah. Makes you a little nutty. I'm already nutty, so you add nutty to nutty. Gets a little worse. The uh, risk of organ rejection is highest the first away. three months after surgery. Do you miss the weather? Oh my God, do I miss it? Yeah, <laughs> of course I could keep track of it at home, um, you know, but I, I, yeah, that's, you know, me, other than family, weather is, <laughs> weather's it. And not only weather, just I miss talking about it. Yeah. I miss being on TV talking about the weather and, yeah. you know, getting people excited about a snowstorm they don't want. <laughs> so. Oh, there's still time. Oh yeah, I can look at the rainfall. This meteorologist loves science, but Scott knows a thing or two about faith, too. Both helped him get to this beautiful new place he calls the other side. I don't know how many years I got. Do I have five? Do I have 20? Don't know. So, uh, therefore, let's do this. Let's just do it. That's how I'm going to live. Let's just go.